Thank you. Thank you. So, thanks for coming and thanks for staying uh, until uh, this hour in the afternoon. Uh, I really appreciate it. So, my name is Janis Gufas, and uh, I'm going to present the work we did uh, under the name Sparkoscope. It has to do with enabling uh, optimizations uh, through uh, cross-stack monitoring and visualization. The work is coming from the IBM uh, Research Lab in uh, Dublin, Ireland, uh, as part of the High Performance Systems Group. Of course, the mandatory who am I slide. So uh, I am a research software engineer in IBM Research Ireland uh, since 2012. Uh, we work uh, mainly on uh, analytics foundations middleware, anything that has to do with uh, distributed frameworks, anything Java or Scala based and uh, proof of concepts, web, uh, web based proof of concepts and so on. They, uh, it's, the work is part of the High Performance Systems Group, uh, led by Costas and the other guys. A few words about uh, our uh, Spark experience. Uh, we love uh, developing in Spark our analytical uh, workloads. Uh, we have uh, fully embraced from the very early versions of 1.0. Uh, in the last few years, we use it to run uh, analytical jobs on large volume of uh, energy-related uh, sensor data. So, as you know, once we have developed the jobs needed, uh, then they were executed in a recurring fashion. So we were receiving a batch of, uh, new batch of data uh, every day, and we were executing the same jobs, uh, getting some, uh, some insights and uh, running those uh, Spark jobs. So it was a recurring process. And, you know, when you are uh, writing Spark jobs, you have to fight uh, the bugs that you are uh, writing in your code. Uh, but it was uh, very clear and very easy to discover via the default Spark web UI. Uh, you could clearly see the information about uh, which job it uh, failed, in what states, and the exact line number of your source code that caused the exception. And usually it would be something uh, uh, trying to cast uh, uh, a string to an integer uh, incorrectly and so on and so forth. But it wasn't very clear for us how to identify the bottlenecks that had to do with uh, performance. So we couldn't easily spot which jobs and which stages were closing and were causing a slowdown in the, in the Spark job. Uh, what was the exact part of our code that was uh, the bottleneck in those jobs? Of course, uh, one of the options that we had was to use the, def the Gangle extension provided uh, by Spark. So we could uh, export the metrics there, use Ganglia. But there were some drawbacks with that approach as well. Uh, we needed to maintain and configure yet another uh, external system. And of course, there was no association with, uh, with the Spark jobs, the stages, the source code, with the metrics that uh, Ganglia was uh, reporting. Uh, of course, the, there is the built-in Spark monitoring framework, uh, but again, there were some problems with that as well. So we found it a bit cumbersome to collect you know, CSVs from the different uh, worker nodes and aggregating them. And again, we couldn't get the, um, the associations with the source code of our job. Maybe you could uh, do some uh, matching with the timestamps and find uh, at which point, at which stage, those metrics uh, were uh, referring to. But still, again, it was a bit cumbersome. Uh, here is a very brief uh, overview of uh, how the uh, current monitoring uh, architecture of uh, Spark looks like. Uh, you have, uh, let's say that you have two uh, Spark workers and uh, there are three, three executors there. Um, the, on each executor, it's attached uh, one executor source, and this is part of the monitoring framework. And uh, every executor source produces uh, one uh, CSV file, uh, who is dumping the metrics into the local file system. So as you can imagine, uh, for every node that you have in your cluster and for every executor that runs inside, there would be one CSV file uh, per executor. So that's when we started to develop uh, Sparkoscope. And as I often say, 
Uh, most of the words have Greek origins, so this is the case with Spark as well, uh, Sparkoscop as well. It comes from, the second part comes from the Greek skopin, which means uh, to look at something. So, what is exactly uh, Sparkoscope? It's uh, an extension to enrich uh, Spark's monitoring framework uh, with operating system level metrics. And this is one aspect of it. Uh, on the other side, we have enhanced the web UI to plot all the available metrics, uh, both the built-in from uh, Spark monitoring framework, but also from the newly developed uh, OS level metrics. Sparkoscope has uh, several different uh, modules. So we developed uh, the cigar source uh, primarily, which is uh, attached to the executor, and it leverages the cigar library, the open source library for uh, reporting uh, OS level metrics like uh, RAM, CPU, and so on. And uh, also we have the HDFS sync, which basically exports all the available uh, metrics into a HDFS directory. Uh, one of the latest uh, contributions is the MQTT sync. It publishes all the, uh, all the available metrics in a specific MQTT topic. And finally, we have uh, modified the, the web UI, and uh, you can plot there uh, all the historical and the real-time plots, which are, uh, which are uh, consuming the data uh, generated from all the above uh, modules. Uh, there are also different flavors in which we have developed uh, Sparkoscope. So there are the historical plots, which means you can view the plots uh, on your browser after a job uh, has finished uh, post -mortem, for post-mortem analysis. Uh, there is the real-time plots, we can, where you can view the metrics on the Spark web UI as the job is, uh, is being executed. And also we have developed the headless version, which means that you can use uh, the cigar source, the HDFS sync, the MQTT sync, without uh, viewing the plots on the web UI. Maybe you want uh, to use another system to analyze uh, those metrics that aren't part of the Spark distribution. So here is how it looks like, how we modify the architecture to support all those metrics and the plots to be uh, monitored and uh, viewed on the web UI. So now uh, we have attached also Cigar on the, as a source, as a potential source to be used on, uh, on the executor level. And now uh, there, is, there isn't any more one executor run, writing on a local CSV file there is one executor writing on a specific HDFS uh, directory that the user uh, can configure. And it's uh, one directory per application. And inside that, there is uh, one directory per executor. So uh, once the job is finished and uh, we have collected all the metrics there on, the, on this HDFS uh, directory, uh, the Spark Web UI, the um, uh, modified Spark Web UI that we have, can uh, consume all those metrics and plot them uh, on the browser. In the case of the, of the real-time plots, um, now we have uh, an embedded MQTT broker on the, on the master level. And basically, as the job is being executed, uh, all the metrics are being sent to a specific MQTT topic, again, that the user can specify. And it's uh, one MQTT topic uh, per application. And by using uh, WebSockets, we can plot all these available metrics on the web UI as well in real time as your application is being executed. Uh, some uh, instructions for uh, so how simple it is to install Sparkoscope, the, the basic installation. Uh, there, is, uh, there is the repo there uh, on uh, the IBM Research Ireland uh, repository. You can uh, clone from there. You can build Spark uh, as you would build a normal Spark, no difference there. We have uploaded some uh, uh, distribution there. Maybe you can download it directly instead of building it yourself. So basically, there are a few things that you need to do. You just need to specify on the, on the metrics properties uh, the HDFS sync, uh, configure the polling period, how often you want to get the metrics, and specify the HDFS uh, directory. And on the other side, on the Spark defaults, you want to specify again the same directory that you specified on the metrics properties, 
and you need to enable uh, the, the logging. So we need this to be correct because uh, on the Spark Web UI, we need to know where to pull the, all those metrics from. If you want now to have the OS level metrics, uh, there are a few things that you need to do more. Uh, you just need to download uh, the HyperX GAR library to all of the, sale of the slave nodes, extract it somewhere on your file system. And now you need to specify that you're using the cigar source as an uh, executor source class, and also specify, append on the LD library path on Spark and the path to the cigar uh, files that you have. Now, on the real-time plots, again, you can uh, specify the MQTT sync as a, as a class on the, as a uh, sync class on the executor level. You can uh, modify the polling period. Uh, you have to put the, the master IP here and the port to use for the, the MQTT broker. And on Spark defaults, you need to specify the, the port on which uh, the MQTT would use and also the WebSocket uh, port. So uh, some um, uh, careful, uh, careful there with some of the configuration because, uh, of course, as you understand, there shouldn't be something running on the ports that you specify already. Maybe you have a broker already running there, an MQTT broker there. Uh, so they have to be the same. And uh, yeah, the same goes for the WebSocket port. It, it should be uh, completely free from any services using it. So the headless installation is a, is a bit more uh, simple. So you just, uh, we have a, a different uh, repository for the, for the headless version. You just uh, clone it, build a Maven project. Uh, you can configure the same, uh, the things and the uh, source uh, as I described uh, on the previous, uh, in previous examples. And now uh, the only thing you need to do is to append those jars on the Spark executor uh, class, extra class path uh, with the jars. Now, in this case, um, that's why we call it headless. Uh, there is no need to have the path version that we have on uh, on the previous repo because the metrics are not being displayed on the UI in this case. And uh, it, now it's uh, demo time. So, so here uh, you have uh, have uh, Spark running 2.1. And let's launch a simple job. OK, so it starts running. If you click here, if you see the running applications and you click on it, uh, this is b basically the part that we added, uh, the executor metrics. Uh, so basically from here, you can see a drop down menu. And it has uh, all the default uh, metrics that Spark already has. You can see the file system reads, writes. Uh, and now you can also see the new cigar metrics that we have added. So let's see the completed task. And as you can see, it's running on real time. It's getting updated. And so this is uh, this plots also the as I said the default metrics that uh, Spark already has as a as a built-in. Uh, built in on the monitoring framework itself. And let's go visualize the um, uh, CPU. So here it uh, shows on CPU it's 100% uh, per executor. So it's one line, uh, one line per uh, executor. And you can see here on the mouse over that you can get the values, you can get uh, the host as the, as the metrics are being updated. So the only difference is that on uh, Cigar, the metrics here represent one uh, node, while on the case of the default metrics, one line represents um, here it's zero. It, it represents one executor. So uh, after the uh, the application has finished, which should be in a bit, okay, uh, you can go on the history server, and um, let's go here on the history server. Okay, and you can see uh, this is the last application that I run, and you can visualize again with the same um, the same look and feel. So again, there is the executor metrics, but now in this case uh, you will get uh, the metrics. Uh, you can plot the metrics for the duration uh, of your whole application. So again, the CPU. So you have a very uh, novel view of all the of all the metrics 
throughout uh, as your job has run. So there's the CPU, there is this RAM. Here it's very low because I only have uh, one gigabyte uh, per executor. So this is about uh, how it looks like uh, the Sparkoscope, the, the full version. Uh, of course, you can use the headless version if it's more convenient for you. You can just leverage uh, all the metrics that being, are being exported in uh, HDFS to run analytics on your own. Maybe you want to get some insights from your jobs uh, on your own and not just uh, load them here like we do. So as a roadmap, uh, we have to, we, w we want to extend uh, the range of available uh, sinks and uh, sources uh, and reach them with uh, MQTT, MongoDB, and other, uh, so and other sinks that uh, we, we have been asked to. Uh, we want also to be a bit smart and try to provide uh, smart recommendations on uh, the infrastructure needs based on the patterns uh, that we derive from the resource utilization from the jobs. And of course, we want to work with the open source uh, ecosystem to improve it and uh, target uh, more use cases. That's it. Thank you so much. And I will take any questions. <laughs>